Welcome back to the TLC Perfect Pond channel. Today we're back out at this seven to eight acre restoration project pond. Last video we added about 7,000 bluegill and 70 small carp to this pond. If you haven't seen all the videos that have led up to this one and you're watching on YouTube, I'll put links to those in the description below so you can check those out. But today what we're doing is setting up something so we can feed those bluegills that we introduced on the last video. Get those things growing really fast so they can start spawning as soon as possible. So the guys here are finishing up putting together one of these solar powered Texas Hunter fish feeders. We're going to have one right here on this dock and then we're going to put one way over there on the other side of the pond. Now in addition to using some high quality fish food which we'll talk about in a minute we recommend these Texas Hunter automated fish feeders for pretty much all of our clients. It's a great way to really fatten up the bluegill, have a healthy, robust bluegill population. As we've talked about before, that simplified pond food chain of plankton, bluegill, and then bass. If you want to have big, healthy bass, you got to start with big, healthy bluegill. And the number of feeders we put on a pond just depends on how big the pond is. You'll find recommendations that say, one feeder per five acres some will say one feeder per 10 acres this pond is seven acres we're putting two feeders out so we're kind of splitting the difference based on that recommendation there if you really want to fatten up the bluegill fast have a really nice bluegill population you might want to go with a feeder per five acres if you just want to feed them a little bit one per 10 acres is probably good enough so this is the model we're installing in this pond today. Two of these, like I said earlier, and this particular model will hold probably somewhere around 70 pounds of feed. So this one here is set up and ready. You can see the solar panel there, which is gonna provide the energy to kind of run this thing and lift up the top there. That's where we'll fill it up in just a minute. You can see down in there, that's where the feed goes. So we just added a little bit of feed here. You can see this feed is tiny, tiny pellets. We need some smaller feed because these fish are pretty tiny themselves. And we just tested it and it throws this little feed pretty good. All right, so we got John here, who's one of our fisheries biologists. And we're gonna talk a little bit about fish food because one of those mistakes we see a lot of people making is they use a real cheap fish food in their feeders and they're not getting the results they wanna see. And before we get in that discussion, we get a lot of comments on the channel, people asking, are we just people that mess around with ponds? Or are we actually biologists or whatever? So my background is actually in marine biology. There's a little bit of crossover to this, but John is a fisheries biologist, mm -hmm. is your background. So they're trained in all this and, and they use that knowledge and background to really get people's ponds back in the shape they want to see them in. But anyway, let's get into the fish food discussion. So what kind of fish food should people be putting in their pond you need to be putting in a high quality fish food um you know you can go to your your, your big chain supply stores and you can get a you can get a good catfish food we're not feeding catfish right we're feeding bluegills and and when we stock those feed trained bass you'll have some bass eating that food but these aren't catfish they have different nutritional requirements than catfish do Another thing that we see a lot of problems with customers putting catfish feed and, and other kinds of feed in their feeders, the feed will clump up. These feeders don't have a big tolerance for that. You'll get two, three, four pieces of food sticking together and it'll come like that in the bag. It's not from your feeder. It'll block the whole feeder up. You've got to undo the whole feeder, take all the feed out, find the mess, make sure it's clean, refill, do again. We see that a lot. Um, like Travis said, we've been, we've been my, me and my partner Joe, we've been feeding fish for, for together, you know, 30 years now. So fish feed is one of those things that we found you actually get what you pay for. Um, we, we feed a Purina feed and we also feed a Cargill feed. Both of them are high quality fish feeds, um, especially for the bluegill and the bass that we feed. They're, they're formulated for these fish. High protein. Um, some have low fat, some have high fat, but these fish are gonna get the nutrition that they need to go out, spawn, get fat, feed your bass, protect their young, do exactly what you want them to do in these ponds. So you don't wanna go out and just buy your cheap run of the mill catfish food if your goal is to grow big bluegill and bass. You wanna- We would rather you food. not, yeah. You'd rather I mean, not. They'll eat the feed, you know, and they'll, 
you know that you know people will say well they got they have nutrition in the pond well that depends on your fertility but you know they are getting getting some nutrition from the pond in the form of bugs and plankton and whatnot but if you're going to go through the expense and the time and the effort of putting one of these nice fish feeders in why don't you go ahead and fill it with a good feed get you know get what you pay for and you you're not talking about that much more money over the long run you go through a bag of feed probably our best ponds may go through a, a 50 pound bag of feed you know in a couple weeks that's and that's all in how you manage it if you're really pushing them so just just spend a little extra money you can get you know you can get these products from your from your from your farm stores from your smaller farm stores you know that's where we get it from um the good people to do business with and and you know putting a putting a quality fish feed and if if big bluegill big bass is your target go ahead and give them what they need and and you'll be rewarded you'll be money well spent yeah if you're after big bass the, the fatter that bluegill is the fatter that prey is the fatter he's going to get too now you talked about feeding frequency or feeding density as far as really pushing them mm -hmm. what are the kind of ranges which you recommend as far as how much feed you're putting out in a certain amount of time right now is when you're feeding when it's warm you know down here in south georgia our fish start eating you know pretty good you know in our systems and in our ponds you know in March and that water warms up and they start feeding it's all in your management you know we can't we can't be at the customers pond watching them feed every day you watch them feed as much feed as they'll consume in roughly 10 minutes that's right where you want to be right now we're feeding we have some guys that are feeding four or five times a day you know we're feeding our ponds three times a day we like to get them in the morning, we like to get them in the midday, and we like to get them in the evening. As much feed as those fish will consume in 10 minutes. And you watch them, you know. It, it, they'll keep going up throughout the summer. And then it cools down again, they'll go down. You'll need to manage differently in the wintertime. One feed in a day during the warmest time of the day. If you're real serious, you can go to a, to a sinking product if you want to, because they don't really want to come to the top. But as much feed as those fish will consume in 10 minutes, three four times a day and it's it's all on how much effort you put into it too okay so so you're setting the feeder put out x amount of food and yeah. you're watching it making sure it's all yeah. gone the floating feed at least making sure it's all That's gone right. in 10 minutes and yeah. if it's all gone then you may test the limits put out a little more this and yeah and this this here is a brand new pond we're still filling it with water now we just put these fish in we'll set the the lowest you can go is one second so we'll set that feed for one second you know, and a lot of that feed at first is, is going to be wasted. You know, those fish got to find that feeder. They got to to learn the times and when to stay around that feeder. We'll set it one second and we'll come out and we'll watch and we'll check and we'll watch and we'll check. When they find it, when they start eating, you know, we'll watch that. We'll go up to two seconds. We'll go up to three seconds. We'll push it as hard as we can push it. You know, right now we're only going to give them two feedings a day. And then, you know, we'll get to three. We may get to four. We may get, you know, these fish are going to get bigger. We're putting a small feed in there right now. We'll move up to the stock, you know, real three, three sixteenth pellet. That's what we feed all of our pond fish. And we'll watch them and give them as much as they'll eat. And then as far as the location of the feeders in a pond like this where you're putting multiple feeders out, you want to spread them out as much as possible? Yeah. You don't want all your fish. Now, if you got a one-acre pond, you're going to have one feeder. You know, right. That's what it is. You don't want all your feeders together. You'd like your fish to spread out, congregate, uh, not not congregate, to spread out in different areas. So yeah, we'll put one here. We'll put one directly across the pond here, and uh, see where it goes from there. That way, we get the fish to spread out a little bit and and equally distribute amongst mm -hmm. the entire pond. Cool. All right, let's look at these bags of food real quick, so we can kind of show you what he was talking about, and maybe talk about the different pellet size a little more. Okay. Okay, so let's go through these different feeds here real quick. So the one we put in the feeder right now would be the Purina in the green bag there. Is that right? Yes, that's a Purina Aquamax, and that's called a 400. So it's a small it's pellet. A smaller pellet. These fish that we just got are two to three inches. They're not going to be able to eat that 316 pellet right now. Okay, so what's the difference in the green Purina bag and the blue Purina bag there? That'll be a 400, and this will be an Aquamax 500, the next size up. That's about a 3 sixteenths, I believe it is. That's basically what we'll finish on. That's what we'll feed. 
any of your ponds, that's what you'll want to feed. This, this pond here has no other fish in it besides what we just put in. So we'll start here. As soon as we think they're big enough, four or five inches, we may get there this year, we may not. We'll move them up to this 500. Okay, is there a different nutrient load in the green versus the blue there? Yeah, your 400 will have a 45% protein and a 16% fat. Your 500 is a 41% protein with a 12% fat. Your smaller fish need a higher need a higher level of protein. Okay, and then the Triton food behind yeah, you there? Yeah, we also feed a lot of this Cargill Triton product. Very similar in size to the Aquamax. We just like to feed some different feeds. We do a lot of tests and see how they perform in our in our growing systems. So you so, can see that is a nice feed, all uniform. Like I said, those bags that you'll get, the catfish feed, you'll have some different size pellets and it's just it's not formulated the same. So that's why we that's why we like these products. And these are great for bluegill and bass. Yes. They really pump the protein to the bass as well. Yeah. Eventually, your, at least what we've seen, your, our feed trained bass on feeders and ponds will, over time, kind of come off the feeder some and, and go to doing what they're supposed to be doing, and that's eating bluegill. They'll still come sometimes. We still see them up to, we've seen them up to a pound coming up, still eating feed. So, but yeah, we're really good nutrition. So, so it's great to have this if you're stocking smaller bass feeding mm -hmm. them until they can get to where they can really right. eat some bluegill. That's right. And they'll convert that fish food a lot better than they'll convert bluegill. So you, you'll be putting weight on them too. So hopefully that was some useful information for y'all as far as what you need to be putting in your fish feeders. So now we're going to go over to the other side of the pond, install this feeder on the bank as opposed to the dock right here. I'll show you the differences in the setup. You have to do a little bit differently if you're putting on a dock versus the bank. We'll also run some of this small food through there, kind of show you what it looks like broadcasting it out into the water. So when we're installing one on a dock like this, we use these straight legs and bolt it down to the dock. Obviously, we can't bolt it down to the bank. So when we get over here, as we'll show you in a minute, we're gonna use angled legs for one sitting on the bank. So now we're on the other side of the pond from where we were earlier. About to set up this other feeder right over there. You can see here the pipe that's feeding the pond. You might can hear the pump way back there in those woods. So that's how we've been filling the pond up. A little slower than we'd like, but it's getting full slowly but surely. And you can really see over on this end, kind of like we talked about on that last video, just how clear this pond is. And we don't want that much water clarity. We want this pond to be fertile and have kind of a dark film on the top. So we'll solve that pretty quick with a fertilization in the next few weeks. So here's this second feeder right out of the box here. And when you order these, you can order them with the straight legs or the angled legs. So we've got the angled legs here because this is sitting on the bank. We used the straight legs earlier, bolting it to the top. So since we're gonna be putting this thing on this slope right here, we have to set the legs as far as the front and back legs at different heights and these things give you the option to do that so we're looking at the front of it right here we have the front legs as far out as they'll go and then we have the back legs as short as they'll go you can see there on flat ground it's sitting at an angle but once we put it on that bank it should be sitting up straight So now we're putting these stakes in there so it doesn't go anywhere. So now we're getting the power supply hooked up here, getting the battery put in there. And all these wires are color coded, so it's pretty easy to put it all together. So John's setting it, telling it what time it is. So we got it feeding for one second at 8 a.m., one second at 6 p.m., but you can set it to feed as much as 10 times per day. So now we're putting the solar panel piece on here and this is not something you gotta have, but something we insist on having. You can run it just off the battery there. We always install these solar panels on here and you want these facing towards the south. That's gonna make sure this thing's got a constant power supply. All right, we're gonna pour some of that small pellet feed in here that we showed you earlier. We 
give it a go. Here we go. You can see it threw it out there pretty good little ways, 20, 25 feet or so. Okay, so it was good to get those feeders installed today. That way we can start really pumping the nutrients to those tiny bluegill we put in here on the last video. Now, ideally we would have liked to have stocked those bluegill in February. Here it is June now, but things don't always go as planned. Have some hiccups, some scheduling issues along the way. But good thing we got them in there right now. And we probably won't introduce any bass until these bluegill get large enough to spawn and have at least one spawning event. So definitely gonna be quite a few months before we introduce any bass in here, but we'll get there as soon as those bluegill get to the right size. Now the next step in the process on this seven to eight acre pond restoration project will have to do with the water quality. So we just had a big load of lime dumped on the other end over there. So we'll be liming this pond, fertilizing this pond, getting the water quality where we want it to be, the water fertility where we want it to be. I don't know if we'll catch that on a video or not, but we do have another liming video on our channel if you want to go check that out and see how we do it. And we'll be sure to keep you guys updated with the progress of this project as much as we can. We'll try to come out here in a few months, maybe take a look at these bluegill, see how much they've grown, see how well our feeding program is working, that kind of stuff. And if you're in South Georgia or North Florida and could benefit from our pond management services, whether that's vegetation control, fish stocking, population surveys, fertilization, any of those things, you can go to our website, tlcperfectpond.com. There's a contact us form there. Fill that out, we'll get back with you, set up a time to talk and discuss your needs and see how we can help your pond. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time right here on the TLC Perfect Pond channel.